be a good time to start the recording. Okay, thank you, Kelly, for reminding me. First up is a public hearing to entertain public comments on introductory local law 12 of 2020, which will amend chapters eight and A314 of the village code to clarify the guidelines and standards of the architectural review board. The public notice was printed in the Times Herald record on November 24th, 2020. The law was referred to the Orange County Planning Department and the Village Planning Board on November 13th. No comments have been received from either entity yet, but there are still a few days left of the 30 day comment period. Here comes Chris now, actually. You uh, because of this, uh, we can't adopt the law this evening, but we still can have the public hearing. And before we allow anyone to speak, I'll just wait for Chris to get on and catch him up. And just so you know, the matter is listed on the planning board meeting agenda next week for actually both laws are for Figured. the board to consider them to provide a report. Thanks, Kelly. Hi, Chris. Welcome. Uh, we just announced uh, the public hearing for introductory local law 12, and we're just about to take public comment. So you didn't miss anything. It's fun to catch up. Okay, so is there anyone in the public uh, who would like to speak? We'll do roll call. Uh, Robin and or Neil. Okay, uh, Susie Sohn, would you like to comment on introductory local law 12 ARB guidelines as a public hearing? Mr. Esposito? Or Mr. Craig? Sorry, I just, I just joined and I heard Mr. Egan. Um, no, I would not like to comment, thank you. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Cordisco? All right, hearing no comments, uh, can I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing and to accept written comments until the close of business on December 18th, 2020? I'll make the motion. Trustee Burek with the motion. I'll second it. Trustee Giacomazzo with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. What I, did we lose Jesus? Yes. I don't see Jesus. I uh, Jess, you need to make a note of that if that happens, no. people get lost. In yep. Okay. Uh, so Jesus didn't vote on this, otherwise it would be 4-0. Okay, uh, moving on to the second public hearing. Uh, we have a public hearing to entertain public comments on introductory local law 13 of 2020, which will amend chapter 310 of the Village Code to clarify the guidelines and standards of bridge preservation review. And here Jesus is coming back in now. The public notice is printed in the Times Herald Record on November 24th, 2020. Uh, like Local Law 12, this law was also referred to the Orange County Planning Department and the Village Planning Board on November 13th. No comments have been received yet from either entity, but there are still a few days left at the 30-day comment period. Welcome back, Jesus. Because of this, we cannot adopt a law, uh, but we can hold the public hearing. And as uh, Kelly mentioned earlier, this law and Local Law 12 are on the agenda for the Planning Board for next week. So let's go out to the public. Uh, is, is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on Local Law 12? during this public hearing. I hear the theme of jeopardy in my head. Okay, so with no comments received, can I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing and to accept written comments until the close of business on December 18th, 2020. I'll make Trustee the motion. Eric with the motion, thank you. And Trustee Gomez with the second, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay, so that concludes the two public hearings. Now we move on to public comment on agenda items only. So is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on any agenda items? Okay. This so is going to be briefer than I thought. Let's move on to administrative business. Looking for a motion and a second to accept receipt of the minutes of the meeting held November 24th, 2020. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Andrew. Trustee Giacomazzo with the motion. I'll second. Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Need a motion and a second to approve abstract 14 containing vouchers 201066 through 201120, totaling $136,509.86. I'll make that motion. Trustee Gomez with the motion. I'll second it. Trustee Giacomazzo with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? 
Um, okay. Uh, Tim, that was abstract 13. Was it? I have abstract 14 listed. But I do see abstract thirteen on the board, so it must be a, must be a typo. Was that you, Jess, that made that comment about the? Okay. Yeah. Then we'll go with thirteen. Okay. That's what's on the meeting documents. Okay. <laughs> then, I, then I mistyped it. My apologies for my notes. Okay. I'm sorry. So who made the motions, or you want to? I made the motion. Okay. It was Andrew and then Jesus, I believe, with the second, right? Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, looking for a motion in a second to accept with regrets the resignation of Carol Herb from the position of village tax collector effective December 31st, 2020. And I, uh, on, a, on the question, um, if we don't accept her resignation, does she have to stay in office? Uh, I, I don't yeah. Don't tell her that. Or, or try. <laughs> Maybe and, we can chain I, her to the desk. And I understand your sentiment. <laughs> I, I agree with you, but uh, I think the poor woman has earned uh, her, her retirement. <laughs> She's going to spend her days with George Lane more and more. So, uh, regretfully, I'll make the motion. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Trustee Giacomazzo with the motion. Can I have a second, please? I'll second that. Trustee Gomez with the second. Any discussion? We're going to miss Carol. All in favor? My vote aye. Thank aye. you. Okay, old business. Uh, discussion slash decision on introductory local law 11 bed and breakfast boarding houses. So the public hearing on this introductory local law was held back on November 12th of this year, and we tabled voting on the law to have some time to review the comments that were received by both the public and others. Uh, all secret action on this issue was taken at the October 8th, 2020. So let's start with this. Does anybody have any unanswered questions with regard to what I'd like to ask counsel? Okay. Uh, any questions? comments or discussion with regard to the questions or comments that were raised during public comment on this. Now, I spoke to Gary about this and that okay. was my concern and he um, assured me that he has no issue with enforcement. Great. Um, so that's really it. That was really my concern is that it was unenforceable. <laughs> In other words, you were asking if the new law is unenforceable or the current code that current code. Okay. I, okay. Uh, okay. So with that said, um, I assume, would you guys like to vote on this this evening then? Well, I want to make, can I make a suggestion? Please. Let's um, have a discussion before we do anything else. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, because <laughs> Sarah talked to Gary earlier and then she spoke to me. Maybe, an idea we could throw out sorry. there. Who we'll talked to Gary and then spoke? All right, Tara talked to Gary. Karen, I'll give you. Uh, no, Gary. Gary, no. okay. I, I wanted to make it's okay. It. It's okay. First thing that goes, or the third thing that goes is I'll hearing. the batteries in my hearing. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, it, it comes. Thank you. Um, food for thought, instead of outlawing the bed and breakfast completely, maybe come up with a, <laughs> a bed and breakfast overlay. So I, I personally don't think there should be bed and breakfast all over Woodbury. But at the same time, maybe there are areas of Woodbury that it's warranted. So, um, if I recall, that was one of the suggestions from the county, right? The county, yeah. correct. And that's doable, right, Kelly? Sorry. Yeah, um, you can put them and you can put different regulations wherever you would like them, uh, similar to the hotel motels, the way you did that happened. Would it and, not have to encompass an existing zone though, like R1 or R2A, something like that? No, it wouldn't. Um, we could talk about some of the ideas that the board has as to where you would like it. And then we could craft something appropriately, maybe an, an overlay district like Andrew suggested, or it could be you know, along certain types of roads or with certain sewer connections or something like that. Really where the board finds it to be an appropriate location. I think that's a creative suggestion. I like it myself, um, but my guess would be, and, and that's great. And my guess would be with regard to that, that Kelly, we can do one of two things. We can either vote it down tonight and then do an overlay as a new local law, or we can table this modified and have a new public hearing. I'd imagine we'd have to have one, right? 
you would need a new public hearing um, and it because it would be substantively modified. So but I think maybe table it for now. And yeah, we can keep it within this local law table and discuss it at a, at a, at a later date with, once we get some ideas together, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah. Is there any limit to how many overlay districts you can have? You already have a water overlay, you have a hotel overlay, you have a senior housing overlay. Now you're looking at a bed and breakfast overlay. Transit oriented development. No, there's there's no limit, but that's why I said if we um, can talk about what types of areas the board wants it, it might not end up being an overlay. It might end up being certain restrictions on where they can be located, which would essentially act as an overlay district. Mm -hmm. Team wedding cakes with less layers than this. <laughs> well, that's what lawyers do, right? <laughs> they do that and they bill. Bill <clears throat> and bill. <laughs> Worth every penny. And there you go. I agree. There you uh, go. Any other questions or, or comments before I, I take a motion to All right. So then what should we do here? We're going to. Oh, I'm going to make a motion in a second to oh. table the uh, discussion. Okay. That's good. I'll make that motion. Uh, can I have a second, please? I'll second. Mr. Burek with a second. Any further discussion before we vote? All good. All right. All in favor of tabling? Aye. 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 Chris? No, I'm going to say no. Okay. I had a sense. I could tell. Thank you. Uh, okay. Discussion update on the shops at Woodbury, Melody Lane, transfer of ownership. So this issue was last discussed at the August 27th meeting. Now, the applicant has since posted an escrow to pay the board's consultant costs related to this issuance and has submitted a current appraisal of the portion of the road they requested to be conveyed. Correspondence has been received from the applicant's architect, Steve Esposito, dated December 3rd, 2020, in which he requests the board discuss this issue this evening. The updated appraisal proposes the area in question is valued at $16,300, and this is what the applicant would like to pay to the village for the conveyance of the 0.42 acre abandoned Melody Lane right-of-way. The right-of-way is landlocked between the applicant's project and lands owned by the state and is currently not on the tax rolls. In addition, Mr. Esposito met with Water Superintendent Phillips and Village Engineer Lindsay on September 2nd to discuss sewer service to the shops at Woodbury noting water service will be provided by the village of Harriman. At that meeting, the concern with the department's ability to responsibly provide sewer to this large a user was discussed and the ongoing aggressive INI program the village began in 2012 was explained. In the case of this applicant, the point of connection is not tributary to the critical location identified in the program, but it will impact capacity. Offsetting of this by reduced INI will meet the department's needs, so a recommendation of $50,000 would be sufficient. 38,000 gallons per day at the $2.70 per gallon cost of the INI removed. There was also a subsequent ESO meeting held on November 13th discussed, at which were the current site layout with regards to vehicular and pedestrian access, signage, and utility layout. At the meeting, I stated the village intends to purchase a 100-foot ladder truck at some point, but currently funds to do so are not available, and this would be the first of the hotels to be constructed in the new hotel overlay district. The applicant would like to discuss a means and method to make a fair and equitable contribution toward a ladder truck. Lastly, the applicant would like to develop and enter into a developer's agreement with the village that would address all of the matters listed above. So now let's have a discussion on this. Any questions? Are, are we, sorry, go ahead, Kurt. Eric, please, go ahead. Are we voting tonight on all of the items you just discussed or just the conveyance of Melody? Item. I'm sorry, Tara. We're, we're or or just the conveyance of Melody? We're not even voting on that because we have to have a public hearing. On that. Got it. Okay. That's Thank what you. I was going to say. It would, it would require a public hearing for both the discontinuance and the conveyance of this portion of Melody Lane. Got it. it was originally my intent to at least vote on the conveyance of Melody Lane, but uh, we do have, and, and I do remember Kelly telling me this months ago, we do have to have a public hearing on that. So depending on the discussion and the, and the motions and votes with regard to uh, that part of this discussion, uh, we'll do that at the next available meeting. Um, so what other questions do we have? And, and Kelly, it would be not inappropriate to question either the architect uh, or the uh, engineer, correct? Would it be okay if we wanted to do that? Yeah. I have several. Sure. Uh, they're not even questions. They're actually points. 
<clears throat> that I disagree with. Um, I disagree completely with H2M's memo. Um, I believe a project this size should be offsetting much more than half of their flow. Um, if you're going to have a project this size and it's going to impact the residents of your town, village, or wherever, you need the, they should be made to make the village whole in, as far as their available capacity goes. That's my first issue with this. Second issue is if we're going to create multiple hotels, how much is a fire truck? Depends on the fire truck. This particular one's going to be about 1.2 million. Yeah, then yeah, no, then then ten. If we need a hundred foot ladder truck to take care of six foot six story hotels, then the six story hotels are going to contribute a lot more than the residents of Woodbury for that fire truck. Well, first of all, we haven't even talked about an amount that the applicant is willing to contribute toward the ladder truck, uh, but there are also other applicants that would be Correct. contributing. We do have commitments from others as well. Um, and it is our responsibility to provide fire apparatus for fire protection in the village. Obviously, we're doing our best to, uh, to mitigate the costs of that fire truck. And uh, the applicant was gracious enough on his own to make that offer during the ESO meeting. So the numbers haven't even been discussed with that. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't think yeah. we can discuss or even deal with numbers until we have all of them together and make it equitable to all six hotels and have, have everybody contribute either the same or by or if somebody's making a larger hotel than someone else maybe by square footage but we need to come up with a way to do it where we just don't you know the first person comes in makes an offer and then we start hitting people up for higher numbers as we go forward is that that's not the right thing to do either uh, and, and i don't necessarily disagree with you chris i just want to make something else clear the reason we have to purchase a new ladder truck is because the old ladder truck is at the end of its useful life and we need to replace it so in doing so, we're going to upgrade the current 75 foot ladder truck to a 100 foot ladder truck because of the hotels. So it's not simply because of the hotels that we're purchasing the ladder truck. We have to replace the existing ladder truck. All right. Well, we will take that as a different discussion, but of course, as, I just want to make that clear. You know, in, in my line of business, this is what we do when you have large developer projects that make large commercial development. Is you take a look at what your water and sewer system are. What, what's the baseline of it? What would putting in this project due to that water and sewer system that lowers the amount or the quality of what the, the existing people enjoy, then they should be responsible for contributing to the to whatever it takes to bring that back up to existing conditions. And that's how I'm used to doing it. And that's how, you know, this has been approved, you know, in the private sector through the state of New York for con contributions such as this. So we you know, I would like to look at something different than what's on what's in this memo. Can I, uh, before you go on with other comments, can I ask Kelly, uh, is there any difference between, and I don't know, the private sector and local government with regard to this kind of issue that we need to be aware of? Well, directly, I mean, obviously there are differences between the public sector and the private sector, but I do think we're getting just a, just a little bit ahead. I think these are all good points that the board should be considering. Obviously they were suggested by the applicant and, and, and I think that you obviously need to discuss them because at some point it's likely that a developer's agreement is going to result and the developer's agreement will address these these issues that Chris is bringing up. Um, but you still do need to get the input of of the public. And um, so I think it's sort of like one step at a time, but um, but these are important issues that need to be raised that need to be discussed. But yes, there are some differences, um, as I've discussed previously between you know, a municipality and a, and a private business, but essentially uh, it's up to the village and what the village wants to do. I'll put it like that. If that was clear. That was clear. Uh, Chris, you have other comments with regard to water and sewer? No, just um, the Melody Lane piece I don't have an issue with. It's a non- And, and that's non the issue. Issue. I'm sorry, I, I, I cut you off. No, to me, it's just a non-issue parcel at this point. And that's the one thing that I do want to move forward with what we can tonight. The rest of the stuff will be covered in the developer's agreement once we complete negotiations based on input from anybody we need to get input from. Um, any further comments, Chris? No. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Andrew or Jesus, anything? Uh, you good? Um, personally, I defer to my better looking, more intelligent, and more more knowledgeable on sewer and water when it comes to that subject matter. But I agree with CJ on that. Uh, in terms, if we can get the Melody Lane started, that, I would, yeah. I, that should be the starting point for us. 
That's what so I'm looking for. I definitely want to get that done tonight. So I'll get that started tonight. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Exactly. All right, great. Uh, Jesus, you said no? I, I agree. Let's do the medity part at least. Sure. I want to get the road done. Tara, any further comments? No, I think it's a fair price. Yeah, I agree. What? I, I'm asking Kelly if she has any anything to add to this. All right. Uh, did either uh, and and Susie, I, I know you're here for this uh, discussion. Uh, we had public comment on agenda items earlier. This is not a public hearing, uh, so I really can't take any comment uh, from anybody other than the applicant or board members right now on this. Um, we will have public comment at the end of the meeting on anything. Um, so I, I, I hope I've maybe answered what you're going to ask already. Um, that's fine. I appreciate your uh, acknowledging me and uh, I don't, I'm here to listen. Thank you. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, Dominic or Steve, you have any thoughts you want to add before we move on? Uh, no, nothing, for, nothing for me at this time. Okay, thanks, Dominic. Okay. okay, so now what I'm looking for now, our next meeting is December 22nd, which is not a full two weeks or 10 business days. Kelly, we can't schedule this public hearing for December 22nd, right? Because we don't have enough time to notice it. Is that correct? Or do we have enough time? You have you have enough time because this isn't a secret public hearing or a zoning public hearing. Um, your but you also publish in um, the Times Herald Record, okay. right? Yeah. 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 So you would have time. I would just have to get at least five days, and December twenty second. One, two, three, four, five. Just I guess when would I have to have that to you by Mon Monday or Tuesday? I'd have to look back at that um, schedule from the Times Herald Record, make sure that there's enough time to get it to Jess to get it published with five days. So probably you're going to tell me tomorrow, tomorrow, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, if the board wants it on December 22nd, I will be emailing Jess tomorrow or you're following meeting which date i do not have well, i i originally thought we'd have to wait until january 14th because that's the next meeting but if we can do this on the 22nd i personally would like to do it then and get this uh, out of the way and move it forward so if nobody has an objection uh, i would like to have a motion and a second to schedule a public hearing to be held at 7 30 p.m on december 22nd 2020 to receive public comments on the board of trustees resolved intent to discontinue and convey a portion of melody lane located off Losey Lane from the village of Woodbury to shops at Woodbury. I'll make the motion. Trustee Graziano with the motion, Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. All right, great. So so Dominic and, and Steve, we're gonna have that public hearing on the 22nd, not on the 14th, great. so that's good. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you guys then. Okay, great, thank you very much for the time. Okay, yeah, we'll thanks, be here Tom. Then. thanks Tom. Thank you. Okay, moving on to new business. Uh, we were going to discuss authorizing bids uh, and advertisement for bids rather for Adams for the Adams Street building at 19 Adams Street, but we're going to table that for additional discussion at a later date. Um, so now uh, the last item under new business is a discussion for the formation of revitalization committee. So uh, Tara, can you please provide some background on your request with regard to this? Uh, sure. It's um... Basically, it's it's following up on my comments from uh, two week two meetings ago. I believe it was on November twelfth, um, where I proposed that we form a committee that would be responsible for um, making our Hamlin centers more vibrant and competitive, and it would be tasked with many things such as raising funds for street or finding funds for street and sidewalk maintenance. Um, prospecting, business development, business recruitment and retention, um, just to say the least. And, you know, we see neighboring towns that have, and villages that have the same type of committee. And it's in our current comprehensive plan, not even our, the plan that we're looking to redo. And this is a component that has never been really explored or addressed, or maybe it has, but nothing's ever come to fruition. And I think now is the time. You have a very excited, base of residents that want to be involved. And I think that that you won't have problems getting volunteers for this. I imagine not. I'm just more curious about what it is that we want to accomplish with this. So you said sidewalk and, and, and sidewalk. Well, if you sidewalk look at what the revitalization committee in Monroe does, 
they're in charge of the, the the dinner under the stars and they did they got grants for their street lights with the flower the flower plants on them and they do holidays and flowers in the spring holiday plants in the in the, the winter um they're looking for grants to redo the sidewalks to make them brick so when you're looking at revitalizing your downtown hamlet areas that's that's what that committee's job is i would imagine in addition to identifying specifically where in yes. the hamlet areas you'd, you'd want to do this kind of stuff you know, Correct. I imagine you want to put boundaries on the streets that kind of stuff yep. um you said business recruitment and retention can you expand on that i'm not clear what you mean you mean you're not talking about employees? No, 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 no. attracting businesses to the community. Correct. So you you want to flesh this out and get some discussion going. They should be partnering with the commons to try to to try to attract people that I mean we have a huge economic hub right here, and if you get those people to down to the downtown hamlets, you're going to support our local businesses. <clears throat> so if you do things like that, people are going to want to do business in Woodbury, the smaller businesses, not just the giant commons and the shops and, and, and the like. Um, and I think that's severely lacking for our current small businesses and for any future. And when you take a look around what's going on, it's booming in other communities other than here. And I, I, I really think that this is an opportunity for us to revamp it. Oh, uh, you know, when we talk about this, I think of, as you mentioned, downtown Monroe, or not downtown Monroe, but that yeah, Lake Street, Street in Monroe, where they, oh. Lake Street, where they do the restaurants at night. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think of downtown Warwick, where they have all of the shops along yeah. the street, which is also a state highway. Um, and, you know, it, you got to have a little vision. You know, I know we don't have an ideal location, but it doesn't mean that we can't make it the best it can be. Gotcha. Right. You know, Smith Clove Road, Valley Avenue over there, it's a perfect location for, for revitalizing, if you want to call it. To make thinking, I'm sorry. Well, was, go ahead. I was going to ask, are you thinking of other locations in addition to that? Yeah, I mean, if you look at down 32 um, by Mario's, that's also another area you can look at. Um, I know it's a state road, but it's also our downtown area. Back in the very beginning of the of the discussions that we had, we and we had a joint town and village board meeting in the old town hall, uh, we discussed that particular area uh, and we dusted off an old plan from the old master plan, which predated the comprehensive plan. Uh, and we talked about a, a whole project to how much money it would cost. I'm not going to get into the numbers, but it was a very comprehensive and it would have been quite wonderful if we could do something like that. Uh, Rob, do you have any ideas or thoughts on this? I, I noticed you're here. I figured I'd ask since we're talking about sidewalks. Okay. <laughs> um, so Kelly, if we wanted to proceed with this, uh, how would, what would the next steps be? What would you recommend? Well, similar to the other committees that you formed, um, you would just form it that way. I tried to come up with like a little mission statement thinking that this was playing off of um, what Tara had talked about last time to try and help with any application that you put online um, to try and attract people to it. I Like she said, I don't think you're going to have trouble getting volunteers for it. Um, mm. But what I thought was you could put something together requesting people for the revitalization committee uh, was formed with the purpose of finding innovative and dynamic solutions to revitalize the village. And then you bring together a diverse assembly of voices from different expertise and backgrounds. And the goal is to find solutions that will be used as a long-term strategy to stimulate the village. Um, so it's trying to go along those lines, but yeah, the short of it is you can just appoint people and I can send that along if Tara's interested. I know she's gonna be key in kind of putting some of that together. He's hired. <laughs> who's going to run this committee? Well, somebody from the committee would run the committee, but they would have to be liaison from the board to the committee. But uh, <laughs> it's what Kelly just said sounded a whole lot like a motion to create the committee. And if somebody wanted to repeat what she just said or just <laughs> refer to what she said as a motion, I think that would be a terrific start. But before we do that, do we need to discuss the numbers and everything? And I know that we can mimic what we've done before, but I just wanna make sure that we get this right from the start with regard to the motion. So Kelly, is there other information or other th things we I need to discuss? I think it would be good on? if you set the number of people, um, just so you kind of have a goal or at least a maximum number of people. From what I've seen, a lot of the revitalization committees actually have more people than the land preservation and the comprehensive plan because you're able to get in you know, a lot of different people, like I said, from diverse backgrounds 
to to participate in it. So, I mean, I would say maybe cap it at 15 so that you don't have too many people. Um, if you're even able to get that, I, I don't know. A lot of people. Tara, did you have a, a particular number in mind? Or would you like to see Max 11, 9 to 11? I don't know. Sounds like a good 9 number. to 11 sounds good to me. I, I was thinking 9, but I'd be fine with 11 too. Uh, you know, it, I like that. I don't think any more than that. Andrew, you have any thoughts on this? Well, I, uh, I'm going to just go back a bit. So a lot of this came out of a meeting that we had with our counterparts in Monroe who have um, if you think back a few years, the state of Monroe and where they're at now, when it seems like a new business is opening up on a daily basis there. Uh, one of the things they brought up to us was the advantage we have with the commons and then also that Central Valley Properties project that really got a lot of, it, it took quite a beating uh, during the planning and zoning board process. And I was on the zoning board at the time but it was their feeling, our, our counterparts in Monroe, that that's a good way to begin because you can get some decent stores in there or uh, um, well, vendors in there, whatever you want to call it. It also creates streets. There is ways to sort of uh, beautify the area in there. This, what they do with their Monroe downtown revitalization is it partners with the Chamber of Commerce uh, which is another component that needs to be added to this whole thing. Yeah. And it's about enhancing business. It's about um, uh, just creating a better business culture for, you know, we're more than just the Woodbury Commons. You know, we have, we've lost a lot of businesses during this COVID and this may be some way that we could refocus on uh, filling the empty spaces and sort of trying to attract uh, decent businesses that are going to keep people here from Woodbury. So um, that I think is <clears throat> at the heart of this Woodbury Revitalization Committee. So I'm all for it. Good input. Um, okay, I, I think we have the framework uh, for the committee and enough to make motions. Uh, Kelly, is there anything else that we haven't thought of before we continue? All right, so uh, Tara, would you like to make the motion? I'll make the motion. That what Kelly said, right? What Kelly said for a Kelly, Kelly, do you have that that you can pass along to Jess for the motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll pass that along. But really, it's just a motion to create the revitalization committee, um, not to exceed you know nine to eleven people. I make the motion to com to create the Village of Woodbury Revitalization Committee, not to exceed nine to eleven members. Um, and I don't know when you want to set letters of interest to come into the village, but that'll be a later date. So that's the motion I'm making. I, I think what we can do is we can do, get this resolved now and then on the 22nd at our next meeting in uh, 12 days, we can work all of that out and then Got get it. that done too. That sound reasonable? Yep. Okay. Uh, so that was a good motion by Tara. Can I have a second, please? I'll second it. Trustee Giacomazzo with the second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Good discussion. Okay, that concludes the regular business. So now we'll move on to public comment. Uh, so let's just do roll call like we usually do. Mr. and Mrs. Krause, do you have any comments or thoughts? No, thank you. Okay, thanks, Robin. Happy Hanukkah and have a good evening then. Thank you. Mr. Brady? Um, I do have one uh, thought that I'd like uh, the board to consider. Um, this came up in our um, land preservation committee meeting the other night with Tara, and um, it, it basically revolves around the village website. And um, the content there is one thing, but there's also the matter of the historical documents that um, a lot of the board members, and if Sandy and I have talked about this in some way, um, that effectively, I used to go back to the old decisions that were available online um, and you could go back for years and those are no longer there. So I'm wondering if there's a way you can discuss getting those back because I'm sure they're in, they're in digital format somewhere and it's a matter of, of getting them up um, and making them available and maybe just paying a little bit more attention to the village website, uh, refreshing the data, um, keeping it current and making it sort of a gateway for some of the things that Tara's talking about with revitalization um, because a good website drives interest 
and um, the one that you have right now isn't doing that to any extent, and it's not really functional, I don't think, for um, the public in the village. All right, thanks, Craig. I, 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 I moderated the uh, ZBA meeting last night, so I have a sense of what you're talking about, but uh, just a question. I mean, one of the things that came up were ZBA decisions in 2007. Uh, are you talking about going that far back and beyond, or? or I'm saying that whatever was available prior to the new website when you switch okay. um, is available in digital format. So whatever was there, just putting that back. I'm not looking for the digit digitization of. No, 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 I get that. I'm, I'm just looking yeah. to see how far back you wanted to go. That's all for whatever we have. Okay. Uh, I would say that, that from a public interest perspective, whatever you have that's already in digital format, you should make available. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk to the clerks and uh, figure out what we can do. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, no, I think uh, that's it for tonight. Thanks very much. Right. Thank you, Craig. Ms. Sohn, anything? I'm good. No, thank you. Okay, thank you, Counselor. Uh, okay, I don't see anybody else in the public. So, uh, right, I'm not missing anybody, right? Okay. All right, let's move on to board member comment then. Uh, just a couple of brief comments I have. Uh, I want to first thank the We Are Woodbury Group and the Beautification Committee for the fantastic tree lighting event this past Sunday at Peroni Circle. It was really something. Uh, it was well attended and holiday cheer was in great supply. Everybody was really happy to be there. Uh, everyone had a much needed boost and a much needed great time and the event organizers did a tremendous job putting this together. So thank you everybody that was involved. That was really a wonderful event. Um, I was going to talk about the Woodbury Parks and Beautification Committee lighting the Winter Wonderland display tomorrow, but my understanding that I found out just before the meeting is that that was canceled, but uh, they also found out that they will be lighting it up anyway and people can drive through to see the lights, but there won't be an event of any kind. Um, for those of you that don't know, although we did mention it earlier, our next meeting will be Tuesday, December 22nd, and obviously not Thursday on Christmas Eve. Uh, that will be our last meeting of the calendar year, and it will be a Zoom meeting that will start promptly at 7.30 p.m. I uh, also want to wish everybody at the Jewish Faith a happy Hanukkah, which begins tonight. And that's my comments. Thank you. So let's go down to Chris. Yeah, I don't have a lot to say tonight. I'm Just a couple of things. With the winter coming and the holiday season coming, just remember to try and stay healthy, everybody, and, and try and stay safe. Um, COVID is taking off like a rocket, and I know the vaccine after today is on the horizon, but I just want to make sure everybody stays safe and, and kind of takes care of their fellow person and, you know, wear your mask, social distance, do what you can to help other people out. You know, we're coming into our holiday season and, you know, the, the saying peace on earth, goodwill to all, just kind of remember that and take that into account as you're walking around and doing your daily business. Everybody have a happy holiday. Be healthy and be safe. Thanks, Chris. Trustee Gomez. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. I want to say thank you to the Real Woodbury Community Organization Group and Rob and his highway department guys for a great family tree lighting this past Sunday. It was wonderful to see so many in our Woodbury community come out of such a cold day to create, to celebrate uh, the coming holiday season. On that note, I want to wish our Jewish community a bright and meaningful Hanukkah. Wishing your families peace and light this holiday season. God bless you all and good night. Thanks, Jesus. Trustee Burek. Thank you everyone for watching tonight. Um, thank you to everyone who made Sunday's event a success. I know my kids are still talking about it. Um, everything that they walked away with, the letters that they wrote to Santa, which we got messages back from um, to our hire department, fire and police departments, and all of the residents who contributed to making it a success, especially uh, the group, the volunteer members of Wheel Woodbury. Uh, my, sincere, my sincerest thanks to you all for doing such a great job and bringing all the holiday cheer that we needed it uh, most this year. I also wanna thank um, my fellow board members for their support with forming the revitalization committee tonight. I didn't know which way it was going to go, and I'm happy that you, everyone sees the value in this and that we can bring some good to the community and bringing some of the ideas that we all talk about to light for our village. And I think it's, it's a very important juncture we're at, and I'm, I'm excited that now we're able to explore this. 
And finally, I would just like to wish our residents who celebrate a very happy Hanukkah. I'm wishing you all good health and peace. Enjoy this time with your families. Be well and stay safe. Thank you, Tamara. Trustee Giacomazzo. Uh, the, am I off mute? No, you're good. Yes, I am off mute. There you go. All right, so uh, a re-election gives you an opportunity to look at the next two years and kind of decide what, where, what direction you want to go and what you want to kind of adopt and move forward with. So uh, tonight is one initiative I'd like to start moving forward with. Uh, prior to our first meeting in October, I received a message from a resident who was involved in an emotionally abusive relationship with her husband and needed help. This is not normally something a local elected official will be involved in solving, but I felt compelled to do so. Um, thanks to many, we were able to get her the help she needed for her, her and her family. Domestic abuse is not an isolated problem. It happens every day, predominantly to women, but also to men, and it happens right here in Woodbury. It recently occurred to me why we are not as successful in this struggle as one would hope. I uh, did a little research and the term domestic violence did not appear on law enforcement radars probably till about 19 in the early 80s. It didn't become a statutory crime until many years later. It was during this time that advocates successfully lobbied the legislature to enact new domestic violence laws, which finally strengthened the hand of law enforcement and established a new mindset in dealing with domestic abuse cases. For years, the death the deaths of domestic violence victims has been the primary message in the campaign against this type of abuse. I, for one, would like to see a change in the way domestic violence is discussed. Uh, women are taught to look for early signs of breast cancer and take steps for prevention and treatment. Women diagnosed with breast cancer are told it is not necessarily a death sentence. With proper treatment, life can go on. We encourage women to look for signs of domestic violence and take steps for prevention and protection. We now need to convince women who are victims of domestic violence that with proper advocacy and intervention, life can go on for them as well. There are hundreds of women who are domestic abuse survivors, women who have successfully escaped abusive relationships who, women whose lives have been state, saved by intervention and advocacy. This is on the top of those women, this is on top of those women who were able to salvage and maintain a violence-free relationship with those responsible for the abuse. In order to balance the public perception, we need to put names and faces on these victories and mourn the casualties. The public, along with domestic abuse victims, needs to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. The embarrassment associated with being an abuse victim and acknowledgement are small hurdles to overcome when lives are at stake. Much has been accomplished in the past 30 years, but much more can be done. It would be difficult to put a face on those who cowardly abuse women. Those that inflict pain don't walk our streets wearing scarlet letters or name tags. They could be anyone, your neighbors, coworkers, mailmen, local elected officials, anyone can be abusive. It's the victims we need to put a face to. This is one of the goals as your newly reelected village trustee to pull back the veil of domestic violence and get those women the assistance and emotional support they so desperately need. No man should ever raise their hands in anger to a woman and no woman should ever accept that behavior as normal. With that said, uh, I would like to wish all my fellow uh, people of the Jewish faith a very happy first night of Hanukkah, and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Great topic. Uh, department heads, Rob, anything? <clears throat> okay. Uh, Jessica? On behalf of Des, no? Okay, Kelly, any final thoughts? Okay. Did you just say Des? No, I said Jessica on behalf of Des. Oh, oh on behalf of Jay. I was going to say. I did say Des. Yeah, Des right. on the mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, with no further business or comments, uh, can I please have a motion and a second to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Trustee Gomez okay. with the motion. Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Thank you, everybody, and good night.